This week's video is critically important. Please watch it completely and share it with anyone that you know working in law enforcement. Pretty much everyone I know uses a cell phone. Supervisors use phones to text and call officers all the time. And officers use phones to complete department tasks. If you're using your personal phone to communicate literally anything about your work-related tasks, you may be exposing your phone to a complete search and download by your department. Recently, a major police department is considering adding this language to their policies. Quote, the department also reserves the right to inspect all personally owned devices used to conduct city business when information stored on the device may be relevant to an administrative investigation and when it's necessary to secure the information for purposes of litigation or to defend claims made against the city. This is the type of policy that I'm talking about in this video. If your department implements a policy like this, do not use your personal phone for any work-related reason. Do not respond to work-related text messages. Do not check your work-related email on your personal phone. Do not make or accept work-related calls on your personal phone. I know this can impact the work of departments. It may make your job harder, but if departments want you to consent to the inspection and potential disclosure of your personal phone, do not consent. So with that said, here's my video on cell phone use by police officers. As cops received a number of questions about cell phones, personal and department issued, what the departments can do with your phones, and steps you can take to protect your privacy. So we wanna provide a basic overview and answer the most common questions. I'm Steve Serbalik, I'm a lawyer who regularly represents police officers in the state of Arizona, and I'm a panel attorney for ASCOPS. This video will cover some of the issues you may face regarding department issued phones, personal phones, and steps you can take to protect your privacy. Please note that this is a general summary and not legal advice. So please consult with your lawyer and your union representative to talk about your specific circumstance. Our goal for this video is to provide you with a basic understanding of some of the issues surrounding cell phones and privacy. But the most important thing for you to remember is, if you find yourself in trouble at work, or if you're worried about your privacy as it relates to your phone, please contact a representative as soon as possible. Experienced representatives can help you navigate this complicated topic but only if you ask for help. First, we'll cover department issued equipment. The fundamental principle here is, it's not your phone. If your department provides you with a cell phone, they dictate the terms of its use and can almost certainly inspect its contents. Because the phone is not yours, you may not have what's known as an expectation of privacy between you and your employer when it comes to the contents of that phone. This means assume that anything you say, type, or search on a department issued phone is subject to full inspection and review by your department. Not only do you have little to no expectation of privacy when you use a department issued phone, you also have limited to no rights to control the device. Your department, as the owner, is allowed to install monitoring software on the phone to maintain their control over how it's used. Additionally, if you use personal passwords in any way on your department issued phone, you may be ordered to provide those passwords to your employer if they decide to inspect your device. Many agencies also have policies that say work phones are for work use only. Even if these policies are not routinely enforced, be sure that you are aware of your department's actual policies regarding the use of department phones, just in case your phone ends up inspected by your department. Next, Let's talk about your personal cell phone. If you purchased and pay for your cell phone, then you are entitled to a far higher expectation of privacy and control of your phone's contents. This higher expectation of privacy means that your department cannot remotely monitor your phone or download its contents without your knowledge or a lawful court order. That said, be very careful of the concept of consent. As you know, if you consent to a search, like a cell phone download, or if you voluntarily download department software on your phone, you may be consenting to increased monitoring of your phone. You also may subject your phone to civil or criminal discovery if legal issues arise. The best practice for protecting your privacy is to keep work and personal phones separate. 
Use your phone for your personal calls, texts, and internet use. And do not use your department-issued phone for personal business. If you are asked to use your personal phone for department business, you may be consenting to the discovery of information on your phone without even realizing it. So avoid the temptation to use your personal phone for business purposes. And if you are asked to consent to use your phone for work, or if you're asked to submit to a download of your phone, say no. We believe that you still have a right to privacy even though you're a police officer. We believe that you should not be forced to disclose the contents of your personal phone absent a court order or extremely good cause. Therefore, if you face issues with your department trying to force you to expose the contents of your personal phone, call and ask us for help. So here's the recap. We talked about department-issued phones, how it's not your phone, you have no expectation of privacy, you have limited control of the device, and how we strongly recommend that you use work phones for work purposes only. We also covered personal phones, how they're different than department phones, and that you do have an expectation of privacy, but beware of consenting to the disclosure of your phone's contents by using it for work purposes or otherwise giving permission. Finally, we discussed best practices, keeping work and personal phone use separate, avoiding consenting to monitoring and discovery, and asking for help if your department is trying to access your personal phone. Which, as always, brings us to the important takeaway. Don't go through this alone. There are resources available through organizations like ASCOPS that can help you navigate through issues related to cell phone use and disclosure, as well as any other significant issues that you may face as a police officer. We're here to help, but we only can assist you if you give us a call. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to hit the button below to subscribe for more law enforcement lessons. I'm Steve Serbalik. Stay safe out there.